let's give this a bit of context. Yeah. Do you want to give us just a brief history of kind of Mel Travis's influence back when are we talking 1940s or so? Yeah, I guess he. I think he even started. And Mel then would have learned. Pre and, then, right? So, oh, yeah, he did. He'd have been learning in the 20s and 30s. I think he was born about 1910 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he grew up with the ragtime stuff, right? So like pre-jazz kind of Americana stuff. And I believe he came from like a banjo background. So, and then translated... With some of that is kind of banjo You, you can hear an yeah, influence there, like even. It? But I guess he's not doing banjo rolls, though, is he? Like, like Not the rolls, this, but the... The, the sound of it. So I guess he took what he knew from picking on the banjo and that kind of Americana ragtime stuff and then translated that onto acoustic. But it, it, it's sort of, what would that be considered in wider context? Country music, I guess? Uh, Broadly speaking, country? I guess so. But we're talking early, 90, uh, so, early 20th century yeah. country music. Yeah, yeah. And then we had... Uh, Chet Atkins, Atkins. Mr. Guitar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 1950s American country music star, but massively influenced and basically using a lot of techniques. But again, it's a whole new audience. Yeah. It's it's popularizing a lot of the style that in some ways has fallen out of favor, but then again, he became Mr. Guitar of that time. Yeah, yeah. Before the Beatles, before Eric Clapton oh, yeah, yeah. and before stuff, you know what I mean? Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Which is hard, hard to comp- comprehend. On it. I, I think that's the tricky part to really understand is the context of, you know, people say, oh, the Beatles are great. And it's like, you don't, but unless you actually think about what other music was around in 63, 64, then like, they are really great. Because it's yes. like, the stuff around them was like, so twee. That, it's like, just the, do-wop and nicey-nicey, isn't it? Exactly. So it's the same kind of thing, I think, you know, like, no one... I mean, if I think back to that kind of era of Mel Travis, it's like the only other guitar player that I can really mainly think of is like Les Paul. I'm sure there are there are other big players, but Les Paul's the other big one that you kind of think of from that era. Um, but yeah, Mel's a he's a beast. I don't know. I went back and watched some of those recordings, you know, because I was like coming over here to play this, and I was like, yeah, he's a monster player, you know, Absolutely. and he's playing in like the forties, and he's just killing it. And then the legacy of that is that some of the top acoustic guitar players or even just guitar players of today um, often cite particularly when they play acoustic often cite those as like primary influences yeah well I mean he had the whole the whole style of playing is named after him yeah Travis Pickens so it's like So let's give a summary of that. What we're referring to, because it is a bit of a slang term as well, is it? It's a bit of a catch-all term for what the thumb's doing, I guess. So yeah. Do you, you want to give us some context as to what yeah, we mean Travis, by Travis chicken? It should be thumb on the bass and then with the melody on top, right? So then you can play, you know, what he's doing there. He's playing the thumb. You know, he's got the thumb doing the constant one, two, three, four, one. And then he's got the bass, the melody. You know, it's like, okay, I can keep the melody going now, but getting that... And it's a way that we can have that, sort of what a, p- a pianist has, where we're playing all all the notes self-contained in a, on one instrument. Yeah. Fingerstyle guitar, and particularly Travis picking, is often the first time we really have that, where we have the full be- bells and whistles. Yeah. Because we've got a bass line, yeah. we've got a bass player, we're implying chords or playing chords on top, yeah. but with a proper melody as yeah. well. It's three in one, essentially, isn't it? So, Absolutely. But I think the, like, the fundamental linchpin of Travis is that four to the floor thumb. That's what's really important, because there's so many types of finger picking but when people say Travis picking they mean literally it's going to be four to the floor so if it's uh, this kind of thing and then with a melody on top and some potentially you know, chords in there as well and again so influential because from there once you've got those skills yeah. once you can do once you've got that three in one yeah you can then do so much more with it and oh, it doesn't man, yeah. always have to be super super raggy super ragtime yeah um, but I think there's a couple of principles that I want to cover um, particularly wh- whether the root note is on string six or string yeah, five, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a different thing that we have to do. And once you know it, it's obvious. Yeah. But before you know it, 
I'd, I'd want to stop people reading tab as much for like every note with this stuff yeah, because yeah. you're making it too hard for yourself and you want to be focusing more on, on what the melody is doing and the rhythm of that yeah Travis is hard to read like it can be a bit of a cluster right you're looking yeah, because at it and every, like, okay. and every cluster of notes when you see it on tab is it could be a different thing to learn you could just have you could know an entire song but one bar does a different move and you can't play that bar yeah. but a principle I want to communicate is if we're playing the C chord which yeah. is where we both often start yeah. not for so many reasons but the key of C pretty fundamental yeah um, we can we, we then be going kind of root note on the fifth down to the third and then um, so physically down um, yeah. to the third and then to string six yeah. for the fifth so we're kind of splitting the triad the triad is there one two three yeah but that octave we move down here so that we're just staying on the thicker three yeah that's so you're going root third fifth third yeah. root third fifth third it's as soon intervals. as we change chord so going to the g yeah one option is just to hit the octave yes yeah which is where we'll often start so you're just going between the two strings and then you can always find where you are if you're just going between two. Yeah. But um, the next option, third's now in the middle. Yeah. Um, again, routine for us, but being aware of that from a theory point of view is really powerful because then whatever chord you play, just know where, you, where your root note is, where you're starting from. If it's an E chord, we're yeah. there. And then it's on those same yeah, strings. It's not. It. It's not even a huge theory thing. You don't have to know that it's it's either the fifth or the third and stuff. No. You just where's the where's the name of the chord? Yeah. It's an E. Yeah. We're starting Start on the there, root. and then you've only got one of two options: string six, four, five, four. Yeah. Or five, four, six, six. Four. Four. So it's just reversed, right? That's Rather than being six, four, five, four. It's but, Going Five, between four, the two, depending on your chord sequence. Yeah, that's the tricky bit. People, it's it's rare that people can kind of play with that. Like yeah. when you start strumming chords, you can often make up your own chord sequence pretty easily and, yeah. and strum it. Doing that with finger style, if you can get to that level, I, th I I would try and get encourage getting that first before digging in too much to play melodies over it's it. It's all about your thumb. Like, you know, it is literally all about having that thumb rock steady. If you can nail that thumb just playing those right patterns and the, the the fingers will kind of take care of themselves eventually but I think that's like for me as someone who's not like a out and out Travis picker you know I'll, like, I'll go through phases and I was like okay I've got some Travis picking that's when I have to like okay right thumb thumb <laughs> it's just like that's yeah. all you've got to concentrate on is getting that thumb and you watch Tommy Emmanuel play or these guys and it's like it's completely separate. Like yeah, that yeah, they're like dun, different, dun, 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 dun. different people. Yeah, yeah it's like <laughs> that is a train. It. It's just going. It's like that ain't. That's not stopping for anyone. It's just that is off. And then these are like picking out the melody, doing the arpeggios, whatever they're doing. But that's the hard part, especially if you, you know, if you like play a bit flamenco, classical, whatever, and you play other stuff, and then you pick up Travis Pick, and it's like. Right, okay, the one thing you've, got to you've really got to concentrate on that thumb and also just like the t being able to get that thumb muted as well is important. So not always open. Yes. No, to get that, to get the train sound, right? And getting that Absolutely. more percussive sound from it. Slightly more banjo. Rather. So, we have uh, Mel's thumb and Chet's thumb. Yeah. What do you consider the differences to be, broadly speaking? Um, what between their playing? Yeah. Um, well, the main the main thing was that, like I said before, is that Mo only used his index finger. Mm -hmm. So even on that super fast stuff with all that rag stuff, he's only playing Thumb it with two fingers. Index. So even when he's doing those fast off pedios, um, um, I can't do it. I obviously don't know how he did it so quick. We we wouldn't, because as a teacher now and a player now, you wouldn't. You'd typically use other fingers because they're there ready and waiting. And that's and that's the principle we teach, right? It was yeah. probably he. Let's be honest. He probably learnt it wrong, or that's how he was taught. And then he just absolutely hammered it to train it. Yeah. Or I mean, who knows exactly why he didn't choose to use other fingers? But that and one on one regard is really limiting. Yeah. On another hand. That's how John Mayer plays like neon. Yeah, yeah. yeah from the first his, finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
so that these principles where teachers like me go, okay, we're going to assign the thumb to the thickest three strings. Yeah, we're yeah. We're going to assign first three fingers yeah, that's to string one, two, yeah, and exactly three. Yeah, exactly I would teach. Yeah. And then there are these absolute legends of playing that don't do that. They just <laughs> ig ignore all of it, yeah, which is, you know. But is that to say that's the best way for everyone to learn? No. That's the way that these titans of guitar playing do. Yeah. The same way that I don't drive a car like you know Mika Hakkinen or anyone it's a show my age there I went straight for a 90s yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Lewis Ayrton, Hamilton Ayrton Senna <laughs> absolutely um, we don't want to drive a normal car the same way that you would drive an F1 car yeah. but a different principle and we, we're doing that when we're teaching finger style because it's a complex high level skill yeah 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 a better way to do it for most people with 10 digits is that method I believe not with his third finger either. I so tend not to use my third finger either. I just move them down or, or do that. Yeah. I, 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 I guess it's just a uh, few things to worry about. Yeah, yeah. And that gives you a lot of options. That doesn't give you many at all. No. But three That's what's so amazing though, watching Merle play is that he could play such high level just with these two fingers. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh wow, okay, that's amazing. And then, but you look at like... It's like the Django um, Reinhardt thing, right? Yeah. Well, what's crazy with the Gypsy guys is like, there's so many kids who play and they play with two fingers yeah they play the runs with two fingers and it's like do you think if Django had four he would just, you know what I mean but that's there's what... also a sound that no, that I know, gives I like, I so, know, I know, and I again know. it's like me I've got a third finger there for the thinnest string but often don't use it yeah. because it's just fewer things to think about and that gives you a certain sound I don't think uh, I should probably do more research I don't think Tommy uses his ring finger a lot uh, I'm um, I'm, sure I'm pretty does. sure he does, but again, he, he's but an ability this, where he, he's, he's got the luxury matter. of choice. Isn't but it? again, Tommy's like pinky down. Yeah. So where do you stand on this? Um, I can't play like that personally, just just because I'm not used to it. But I was playing... encouraged to do it. But what happens is, if you play stood up ever, yeah, you'll probably play finger style like this. Yeah. Because when you're playing electric, in particular. It's just a, a lot more comfortable. The guitar's a little bit low, it's close to your body, and yeah. that becomes... Dave Grohl, for example, finger picks like that. I often do, but I've trained myself to have such so such a wedge with the guitar. So the guitar's wedged in at the hip there, it's held there, yeah. and that guitar is now stable, so I don't have to... Uh, I can have my hands free. Yeah. Um, most people encourage pinky there. Yeah. You encourage in your course to have kind of your fingers here to train the thumb. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You could, as personal preference, then keep your finger down. And if you were starting totally afresh and you wanted to go along that line, uh, have the other fingers here and then the thumbs, you know, free and the fingers are free, but the little fingers staying down if you wanted to go that route. Yeah. I, I really like the free floating thing. Yeah. So that's what I've tried to train myself for but as a default if I'm not thinking if I'm doing a gig and I'm having to play right that one time I'll probably do that's my safety net yeah but um, that's from a standing up playing stood up thing interesting I think it's like you say sometimes it's like a crutch thing or like you know go to where you're comfortable right I've just never ever played with my pinky down typically mm -hmm. so I can kind of do it a little bit if I'm doing the kind of that style because it kind of lends itself <coughs> You know, if you're Travis picking, you're kind of, you know, typically, you know, you kind of, you play more like this, right, with your hand from like a, you know, quote unquote kind of claw sort of angle. Yeah, I really like the claw um, from, analogy. You know, so then you've kind of got, it's easier, right, to put your pinky down and, and maintain that. You know, if I was going to play without a thumb pick, for example, and I was going to play Travis picking, and I want to get the thumb nail, like my hand, my whole hand's moved here. I can't play like this. If I play Travis like this, there's no, there's no punch. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. using my flesh. So it's like, okay, I need, to, I want my nail. And now I've had to move my whole, you know, my whole hands moved. So it's like I can't get any of that sort of technique or that dampening. So 
is just so... How long are your nails, by the way? They're pretty long, actually. They're probably... They're long. Yeah, so that, they're, they're as long as, I would say, that's a two-week holiday, and I haven't cut my nails for two weeks, for, for an example. Yeah, it would take me longer even to get that. You've got good growth, then, if you get that in two weeks. Yeah, it, it is mad sometimes. But, um, yeah, the, the danger with them that long is, I guess, they'll break. Yeah, yeah, I'm quite lucky. Mine are quite... They're flexible, which is actually good. Mm. If you they're brittle, so they don't break, yeah, yeah, when they're brittle is when you're really sort of when you've got issues. But like mine are a little bit hooked. And they, that's a whole like. No, of course. And as as I was know. telling you earlier, um, I keep my nails short, and I, I sort of pick with the flesh of the fingers. Yeah. But then I'm more susceptible to blisters, and with the thumb in particular, because I don't use a thumb pick, I often practice with a plaster. Yeah. Um, that's not going to build the calluses, so I'm sort of causing the problem it's creating in the first place. But if I've got a huge blister, I can't play. Yeah. Um, but also, so a lot of steel string players don't even use nails. Yeah. So they'll have yeah. the thumb pick and then the... You know, like, I think Tommy's and all those guys are pretty short. Yeah. So, you know, you don't it's need them as much for the high Absolutely personal preference yeah. and whatever, balancing what you're going for with what you're able to do and what works for you. Yeah, and there's some great Travis players who don't use a thumb pick, you know, so it's like, you don't have to use a thumb pick, you don't have to have nails, you don't have to play claw style, you don't have to put... You can do what you want, as long as you kind of get the sound that you were after in your head but I think know. being aware of more allows you to find which one works for you right if you've only yeah. ever done it one way and you're like that's how it works for me yeah. how do you actually know yeah. you've got to, you've got to try out things like yeah, the thumb 100%. pick and all those sorts of things yeah it's like I was saying before with the, you asked me about the flamenco thumb style it's like I'd kind of learned some stuff out of the book right? I've got a flamenco book I was like I learned all these licks and I was like, went to see a guy and he was like that's great but you know your thumb technique is just completely wrong now go and relearn everything that you've learned but with rest stroke thumb it's like okay give me like give me two months and I'll come yeah, back yeah. to you kind of thing so it's like is that what you did then? yeah I basically went back and relearned everything that I'd learned because you wanted to do that style of getting that the volume of the sp thumb that's specific to that genre so some stuff is like you do have to do certain things technique wise but you know yeah. I think rules are meant to be broken to a certain extent as well. They absolutely. So, you know. Well, they're, they're, they're meant to be assimilated, and then you have your choice yeah. to play the music, which is art yeah. at its best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that does break rules. And yeah, what's well, like the old thing, like learn it all and then forget it all. You know, yeah, like yeah, kind of that's the challenge, thing. especially with things like songwriting and jamming and all that. You are. Yeah, you don't be thinking, oh, C, oh, well, I should go to F now and G seven because it's like that's probably the most boring song ever. You yeah. know, it's just like or the most genius song ever. If it has that art over it, if yeah. it has that just bit of uh, bit of magic over the yeah. top. Of it. Even that's just the that's just the intro. <laughs> the point puts <laughs> the melody in. <laughs> it's Fantastic, like... isn't it? But that has some of those same principles, but it's playing with them. So it's kind of reversing the uh, the thumb being strict to the thumb playing the riff, and then keeping the chords in the right hand, but the chords being that. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, the th that's the ostinato, right? Or the yeah. pedal is the little chord, the chord, and then he plays the riff. Yeah, and then he sticks the melody on top just to. But you can take it up you a can level. fear how there's that influence of all the ragtime stuff. And you were saying before, uh, Merle, Chet, Tommy, basically. Yeah, that's, that's your. I mean, you know, Merle was obviously like he invented it, right? It's called Travis Picking, and then Chet. You know, I think it's undeniable that he kind of then elevated that to the next Mr. Guitar. You know, Mr. Guitar, right? And then I think there's a such a strong lineage again between Chet and Tommy, right? So yeah. it's like, and then Tommy's still going, right? There's no yeah. one really to kind of. I mean, obviously, there's a whole breadth of you know like new fingerstyle players. You're just saying like Mike Dawes and all these other guys, John Garm, etc. But um, you know, I, I still think Tommy's holding the mantle still right it's still playing I guess everyone and, else goes you know. uh, adds that element of percussiveness which is that modern percussive you playing sure? yeah um, and Tommy doesn't do that and he's got such a other focus on melody and and, and, and so much going on it I feels like he's got five five different picking yeah. hands hasn't he I think what's amazing for Tommy though where, where a lot of where he shines even compared to even outside of fingerstyle players he's such a performer yes you know, it's just yeah. like he's like He's able to do all this stuff, but have that cheeky grin and like play with the crowd. And it's just like, how can 
you know, you saw me I tried playing the intro I was like alright I've just got to, you know I don't I was kind of remembering the riff right so I was like I'll play it for you but it's like concentrate you know I'm like one two okay that's how it goes I'm just going to concentrate for a minute he'd be like oh I'm going to play that and the melody and go hey guys how's it going and like yeah. put on his big like brash Australian personality doing a, doing a same, stand up yeah. show at the same yeah, time like, right okay that's like he's a, a pure entertainer you know? and the party trick is to be able to break a string and then change it while keeping playing <laughs> You know, like crazy, right? But they can do it. These yeah. guys can do it. Yeah, he's a legend. Um, I remember. I think it was Nick Harper. I saw do that. Oh, really? And uh, I think he'd probably learnt it from from Tommy. <laughs> probably heard about that happening. There's a like, great BB right. King doing that as well. On that I've seen all over Instagram and stuff. And he's like shredding away, and he's just like the screen is string up like <laughs> doing a few lips. Just right. keep the van going. Here we go. Okay. Incredible. But yet it is such a performance thing. That whole finger style thing. And I think sometimes it doesn't actually come across as one thing that's perhaps hampered the genre is that it doesn't come across as well just on the recording because you just presume it's more guitars yeah. or when you're not aware that it's just one person it just tends to sound like the lead guitar sound yeah. that we're used to hearing on pop and rock music whereas seeing one guy on stage doing all this and getting such amazing sounds where it feels like you've got three guitars going at once a one man band yeah. and you say they're being the charismatic front man as well they yeah. are the complete band in one it's yeah. impressive it's very impressive that, so we didn't talk about that with the, when we were talking about Merle and Chet that you know to put it into context it's like when Chet was learning Merle Travis tunes like that was from a a vinyl one, you know, it's like he wasn't watching <laughs> yeah. it, it wasn't on YouTube, he wasn't going, yeah. Oh, look, he's doing four to the thumb. He, he might have caught him on TV yeah, once, exactly. Maybe, you know, so it's like he would have heard that. And people, people literally thought Chet Atkins was two, two guitar players, yeah, you know, yeah. People didn't know that was one guy doing that, so it's like. You know, we don't have the luxury of, you know, oh, I'll just go and download the tabs and watch Andy's <laughs> video on how to play it, and then it's all done, right? But it's like, no, we had to actually, like, you couldn't slow it down, you pop your your vinyl, your needle on the vinyl, listen to it, maybe like actually slow it down physically with your hands. Yeah, they'll put it to the other setting if you had a vinyl which oh, would yeah, do that. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> and then, but in the, then the, the pitch is going to change, right? And it's like, it's not like, yeah, nowadays on YouTube you can slow it down, the pitch stays the same and everything. That's like, such a good feature. Oh, I love that. Not at least for the old vintage songs, yeah, with yeah. some Merle Travis, get, put, it, put it at 75%. Yeah. Suddenly, a human can play. You know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you yeah. don't have to be yeah, able to big play. Big time. So you know. It's, uh... But yeah, they, these people were the showmen of their time, and when there wasn't, you know, when when that sort of modern entertainment was in its infancy, yeah, these were the guys. Because one acoustic guitar, and that's all you need. And, and yeah. him, you know, you can you can do it. Yeah, he could blast it out. Oh, what's the guy? Um, oh, Roy, someone. Here we go. Check this guy out, man. He's this guy's up there, but he's like proper pulls funny faces and I think you could definitely acclaim a lot of Tommy's. Absolutely, so the right hand looks really similar actually to Tommy's right hand. You got like relaxed kind of thing going yeah, on. Yeah, I don't know why. Bloody huge hands as well. <laughs> <laughs> Old school, man. It's the variety show thing, isn't it? You've exactly. Got your, you've got your three minutes. There you go. So where do you stand on... Like that's obviously an electric guitar, but of of that style, you can hear the boom jab, boom jab, boom yeah. jab style in the background. Where where do you stand on doing that with a pick? You said um, that the gypsy jazz style is very bent wristed and sort of like like the thumb of flamenco style. It's yeah, got to get that kind of attack. Yeah, big time. You can see a huge crossover between like the flamenco thumb technique and the. Uh, picking technique from Gypsy Jazz very and I'm, similar and I'm seeing a bit of that here from Roy Clark as well just I, I mean not massively but again his right hand is looking far more like an acoustic guy such as Tommy Emmanuel doing yeah. fast picking than it is um, an electric guitar style which I teach and, and typically we play more to this side yeah yeah yeah, like yeah. more on the thumb side so there is that crossover even when you're using a pick yeah I guess from like, playing finger stuff like you said I mean this is a really old video so it's like it's probably I'm sure he would have cut his 
cut his teeth playing acoustic guitar. And yeah, it's exactly. Like, it's, the, it's the fifties. Leo Fenn is like, look at this. So like, oh my god, it's a spaceship. Do you yeah, know what it, I mean? It, like, it, let's. I'll, I'll play. It's, it's, it's nineteen sixty when we had had the first Stratocaster in the UK. Mad, isn't it? So this is you know fifties, perhaps even forties as well. But he's. Like, I mean, you don't even want his playing this. Some sort of jag or think, something. It looks like a jag, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just looks it must be late late fifties then I guess he, from he, the video. He could almost just crack out some, some Nirvana there or something. I know, right? Well. That's, that's hilarious. Um but there is a crossover between these styles and that's that's what I want to communicate here by giving the course that you've done and this whole Travis picking and, and finger style some context is just by adding a little bit of of this skill, yeah, you can do so much with it, and oh, it gives yeah. you so much understanding of other ones. No matter what you want to, what guitarist you want to be, yeah, big time. So I think, well, you, you you're kind of accompanying yourself by doing that style, aren't you? you know, Absolutely. Like your, your thumb, your kind of your thumb is your, you know, one persona if you want to think of it that way, and then your fingers are the other persona, right? So you're kind of accompanying each other, and then if you can sing as well, I can't, but um. You know, then you're really on. But I've already right. heard you when you were playing um, uh, Cannibal Rag and a few others. You were singing along to it sort of naturally to to emphasise the melody. That's an amazing thing because a lot of people don't work on that skill, and therefore the the voice is is the melody because the voice is something that we all hone in on. We all yeah. have a voice. We can all speak. Yeah. Therefore, we all sort of hone in on it. The other notes below. Um, are often add more complexity, but this starts us along the line of hearing a chord and being able to play, being able to pick out every note in that chord, even yeah. if there's six notes or more, because you've got these three, well, two like a bass line, a melody, and then within that, an implied chord. Yeah. If you get your head around that, that's just you will always be better at working out any song. Yeah, and just solo your three or voices, isn't it? I was actually listening to Tommy on a podcast recently, and he was talking about you know, he'll when he's teaching, he'll try and teach you to like be able to sing, you know, get a reference tone, mm -hmm. be able to sing a third and a fifth, and then just hear a song and go like, basically learn the song by hearing it. You know, yeah. it's like my ear's not great. It's like it's probably my weakest attribute. Like, okay. if I was going to be like if I was going to sort of critique myself I'd be like my ear is where I where I think I've got my sort of biggest you know lack of skills personally just naturally you have know. you uh, did you have to therefore learn more from Tab or more from people mm, showing you something or? I think I'm a good visual learner mm -hmm. I think I've always been a good visual learner but I think also going to like music college and like I'm like, I'm much better off if I can see something I find it way easier to learn it. My ear is like... Like as in being shown where to put your fingers yeah, on the technique? Yeah, you could probably show me videos without even the audio and I'd be in a better position wow, than give me nice. just the audio. Because I'd be like, okay, I can see what chords he's playing. You know, and that's Whatever experience, works, right? Though, yeah. It's weird though, isn't it? And it's like... And I find that... Do you find that interesting when you're teaching like left-handed people? Because you forget that. And then I put like, I'll put chord boxes on the screen when I'm teaching people and they're left-handed. Yeah, like, and they're like... It's and they're like, oh, oh, they start freaking out. And I'm like, oh, I can do it. I can find you a left-handed one. And then go and find these left-handed chord books. And I'm like... But, you know, when... What situation are you going to have a left-handed chord book on you? It's like, no one's going to give you a left-handed chord if I you're on a gig, you know. Or... I feel both ways on that. I feel like... It's weird, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, left-handed people have had to learn how to do right-handed things all their life. Yeah. Because even everything from how you're taught to write is set up from a right-hander's yeah. point of view, from the left to right of the page. Yeah. Um, but also, I see it the other way, where I, I don't know of a left-handed pianist that asks for the piano keys to be the opposite way around. Yeah. And therefore, whichever way, when you're learning something new, it's hard for everyone. And r I've heard, I've had as many right-handed learners say that chord boxes are upside down than I have left -handers. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Because it looks upside down to everyone. Yeah. Because it is this thing yeah, happening, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's chord boxes are the way around, they look to you. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. And you can avoid that by just pushing them, putting the chord box that way around yeah. as well, which we tend to do these days. Yeah. But... It's it's both ways. You've got to you, people learn as, as soon as you know certain things, everything becomes easy. Yeah, and it's why finger style is such a great way to teach about these individual notes out of chords, your arpeggios, walking bass lines, and melody. 
yeah. melody over chords, which is like music. Yeah, yeah. But learning how that really works at an advanced level, fingerstyle is just amazing for that. Even if it's not like your primary thing to be a ragtime fingerstyle player, so yeah. it's not needed. It's just an essential piece of study for like anyone that really wants to kick on beyond an intermediate level. Yeah, just goes around G sharp, takes us to C sharp. Yeah, yeah. Takes us to F sharp, takes us to B, takes us to E, A, then six. Hey! Totally different style though.